What is going on you guys and welcome back to the film room. Uh, it really seems like anytime a safety hits the open market, whether he's released as a free agent or is even just asking for a trade, then the Cowboys automatically get put in that discussion of where that safety might end up. So with the news this past weekend of the releases of Ricardo Allen and Trey Boston from their respective teams, we're going to be taking a look at whether or not the Cowboys should take a serious look at either of these guys, whether or not they would be a good fit in the scheme, whether or not they're the same players maybe they once were, if they're worth signing to maybe a little mercenary one-year, three, four million type deal. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at that today, so I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so close to 2,000 subscribers. Seriously cannot thank you guys enough for that milestone, and uh, yeah, let's go on and get into it. Starting with Ricardo Allen, obviously you have to look at his history with new Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Allen was a part of that team that went to the Super Bowl under Dan Quinn, and obviously if you bring him in, we'll be familiar with the scheme, and we'll also have the versatility to play both roles as free safety and strong safety in this Dan Quinn scheme for, I believe, three of the years that he was with the Atlanta Falcons under Dan Quinn, he was playing strong safety, and then these past two years got moved to free safety. So if we were to bring Ricardo Allen in, we know we'd have a guy that would have a familiarity of the scheme and an established relationship with defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Now where I find concern with the prospect of bringing Ricardo Allen into this Dallas defense is that he would likely be at the free safety spot. I think it's already pretty well established that Donovan Wilson is going to be our strong safety, kind of come down in the box type safety this coming season. So if Ricardo Allen was to come in, then in this Dan Quinn scheme, he would likely be the one high guy or the middle deep third in the cover three looks that I think we'll be giving a lot of. And I just don't think he's very good at it. I definitely think he's better as a strong safety. And I think he's struggled these past couple years dropping back into that deep middle part of the field. And oftentimes in going through his film, what I'll see him do is just kind of do a straight drop back. And sometimes you can tell he's kind of panicking, scrambling, and looking lost. And it caused him here. His footwork was just all over the place. It eventually falls down. And it's not like Antonio Brown really even gave him a move. He just was kind of looking back and then ran to the right side of the field. He's just not really a guy that I would trust to put back in this deep middle third and have him roam sideline to sideline. Uh, you'll see on this play here, and what I want you guys to watch on this play here is the matchups that we have. We have manned up on Darren Waller on the left, the defensive left side of the field, and then a rookie, A.J. Terrell, also manned up on rookie Henry Ruggs on the left side of the field, and we know Ruggs is a speedster. So with this being the case, you would think Ricardo Allen being that deep roamer, that center fielder kind of guy, might kind of shadow a little bit to this left side of the field to account for the two guys that are likely getting the ball in this fourth down situation. Uh, but he kind of stays even and focuses even a little bit on a guy like Jason Witten, who isn't really going to be much of a threat in a situation like this and ultimately pays the price for it, can't help his rookie corner over the top, and uh, the Raiders convert on this fourth down play. Terrell doesn't really get beat necessarily, but uh, a good back shoulder throw and catch by Carr to Ruggs, but Ricardo Allen's just nowhere near there to be able to help or make a play. And you'd think in this situation that Ricardo Allen would be prioritizing. It's a fourth down situation. So the Raiders are obviously going to want to go to their big guy in Waller or their speedster in Henry Ruggs. So I would like to see him prioritize this side of the field more than that of a 35-plus-year-old Jason Witten. I know Witten's a guy that maybe back in the day could have gotten open over the middle on a big fourth down play like this. We saw it, of course, against the Detroit Lions in the wild card round. But this is 2020, brother. You gotta you gotta be prioritizing Darren Waller and the speedster on the outside going against your rookie corner. And he just doesn't. He just once again kind of drops back, stays in the middle of the field, and then oh well it's too late to really do anything now. I'm gonna do a little hop step and hope he stepped out of bounds. I think he did. Yep, he did. <laughs> It felt like at times going through and watching Ricardo Allen's film at free safety that he was just kind of doing the bare minimum. And I'm not trying to say there was necessarily a lack of 
effort, but when in situations like these, you're just dropping into the deep middle of the third of the field, and you're just kind of like being like, okay, I'm just going to take away the deep middle. That's not really what you want. You have the Buccaneers. This is a big play, third and 12, late in the fourth corner. The Bucks are up three. This would be a huge stop for this Atlanta defense. And you would think Ricardo Allen, once again, would be prioritizing the side of the field. They only have one receiver on the defensive right side of the field, and they have two speedy wideouts on the defensive left side of the field. And Allen still drops back into the middle for whatever reason. So when Chris Godwin just runs his straight seam route, he's able to get leverage on the boundary and Ricardo Allen posture up and just let the ball fall into his lap for an easy completion. Wasn't even really that contested. So Ricardo Allen just, I don't think he's a guy that I would trust to keep a lid on a one high cover one defense or a deep middle cover three defense. He's just not a guy that I trust uh, or I think has the instincts to be that deep roamer that you need in this Dan Quinn 4-3 under scheme. So even if we were to bring him in on a one-year, three million deal, I would hope that we would draft a guy in the second round, a Richie Grant, a Trayvon Moerg, a guy that I think will be far superior playing this deep center field roamer. I just don't think Ricardo Allen uh, specializes in that. I think he was much better being the strong safety for this Atlanta defense and yeah you can see right there that's just something that should never happen a third and long you know you have two receivers on the defensive left side of the field you should just be dropping straight back there's no reason to drop back to the in between the hashes on this play so yeah guys i i don't think ricardo allen is going to be the answer so let's get into trey boston and see if we can find something there just off the bat, and uh, even though with Ricardo Allen you do have that experience in the scheme and that set relationship with Dan Quinn, I do think that Trey Boston is going to be the guy that would be more comfortable at the free safety spot in this Dan Quinn scheme. Since entering the league in 2014, Boston has been a traditional free safety and has never made a switch to the strong safety spot, so I just feel like he's a guy that's far more comfortable roaming over the top, going sideline to sideline from the middle part of the field, and is just far more of an instinctual player when it comes to uh, what to do situationally at that one high spot. And this play here is going to show exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's going to be pretty much, it's funny, it's going to be like the same exact situation that we just saw Ricardo Allen in. Third and long for the Saints in the fourth quarter. Panthers are down and need a huge stop. And you'll see Trey Boston on this play rather than floating to the middle part of the field. He knows, okay, I got two receivers over here, only one receiver over here. So I'm going to focus on these two guys here. I'm going to stagger over to the right and then come down and make a play on the football and intercept this pass. We saw Ricardo Allen in pretty much the exact same situation take his first steps towards the middle of the field. And you'll see Trey Boston knowing that those instincts there, the understanding of the situation playing towards where he thinks this ball is going to go and where he thinks the most help is needed and then coming down and making a play on the football and getting the interception. Another thing I want you guys to notice on this play is the leverage that Boston maintains for the deep route and the underneath crosser. Even if this ball was throwing deep, you'll see the leverage he has. He's going to be able to come and get it over the top in the middle of the field. But once he sees that this ball is thrown, that's when you'll see him break and come down on it and make the play. Another thing I really like about Trey Boston is how he comes down and attacks the football. Once he sees that ball is being thrown, if he's in the vicinity, he's planting that foot and coming downhill to try and make a play on it. And if it wasn't for a few drops here and there on a couple of these plays, his interception total would certainly be higher than what it is now. So if we do bring in Trey Boston, I'm definitely not opposed to it like I was with Ricardo Allen. And I think on a one-year or two-year deal, averaging about 4 or $5 million in each of those years or in just that single year, I think this could be a solid fit for the Dallas Cowboys and at a good price too. I still would like to see us go safety in the draft at some point, uh, likely in the second round, get a guy like Richie Grant or Trayvon Moerg, as I had mentioned earlier. And if we do go that route and Grant or Moerg or whoever we draft with that pick are not ready to be a starter right away, then Boston can be a reliable presence to start 
and be the last line of defense in this Dallas defense. Well, guys, that is going to be the end of this video. I appreciate you, as always, for stopping by. Definitely comment below and let me know what you think of all this, if we should consider bringing in Ricardo Allen or Trey Boston and why. And yeah, guys, once again, appreciate you all for stopping by, and I will see you on the next video.